Thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to this uh, kickoff meeting uh, of uh, Open Earth uh, Monitor uh, project. I would like to take the opportunity to, to give you a bit the perspective from the European Commission's uh, point of view on uh, where we stand with the digital transition, the European uh, Green Deal, and how we can make sure that by uh, tuning those two uh, priorities of, uh, of the Commission, uh, the, 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 the project uh, Open Earth Monitor can really be uh, fully in line with uh, those uh, priorities. Let me move to the next slide if I manage. Yes. So it's, it's already a, a, a long story. It goes back, you see, to the Council uh, conclusions a few years ago where uh, the, the Commission and the Member States were encouraged to work with relevant actors to facilitate innovation and development of space application, business opportunities, outreach activities, as well as industrial capacity, including for new space companies and initiatives, SMEs, startups and scale-ups. So it's not something uh, new to make sure that we can use the technologies at our hands to address the priorities and the challenge of the of the Green Deal. So we are you are all aware that we are living in the fast evol evolving landscape uh, in Europe. The policy agenda is now since a few months since February in particular dominated by the urgency to strengthening the EU's uh, resilience and open strategic autonomy. So we, the, 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 the document I'm referring on, on the right, this communication that was published uh, end uh, of June, start with this sentence, the world is experiencing tectonic geopolitical shifts, reinforcing the mega trends already affecting the EU. Now, usually in those policy, uh, very polite documents, we are not used to this kind of uh, of language. Um, so what the Commission has proposed is to, to try to cope with those uh, upcoming uh, and actual uh, change uh, with those two important policies, the European Green Deal and the digital transition that is uh, based on the European strategy for data. So they are both at the top of the EU political uh, agenda and uh, and their interaction will have massive consequences for the future. While they are different in nature and that each subject to specific dynamics, their twinnings, meaning their capacity to reinforce each other, deserve closer scrutiny. So I invite you to have a look at this uh, report. It identifies 10 key areas of actions with the objective of maximizing the synergies and consistency between our climate and digital ambition. In parallel, just a few days before, so the 10th of June, the, the, the competi Competition uh, Council adopted those uh, Council conclusions on the future of, uh, of Copernicus. And I've just flagged from that uh, document. You can just Google and you will easily find it uh, on, on the internet. I just highlight three recommendations. The first one is underlines that the, the Council underlines that easy and flexible access to and use of data, including all the data necessary for Copernicus service, must be facilitated and that Copernicus can contribute to the end-to-end -end development of a European value chain, including fostering the downstream sector by implementing and promoting user-friendly and as far as possible and where appropriate energy efficient European data information access platform. And uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to see, and I think it will be a challenge that will guide your uh, projects over the next uh, four years, that you can really have a say in, in contributing to implement and promoting user-friendly uh, uh, platforms. They recommend, and it's relatively new as well from the Copernicus point of view, to interface very well with the Digital Europe uh, program. And they've mentioned in particular the Destination Earth initiative. And it was, as you know, one of the outcomes flagged in the in the topics uh, when it was uh, published in the work program 2021 of Horizon Europe. Third point, the Council underlines the importance of implementing at least one Copernicus data information access platform associated with computing resource to support economic ecosystems and research, 
and of networking national data platform in order to ensure a sustainable and independent European access to data information products. Okay, here in particular, they are referring to the next generation of the, of the DIAS, and you might know that uh, a procurement uh, was launched a couple of months ago uh, by, uh, by the European uh, Space Agency uh, under the Copernicus uh, uh, program. Uh, evaluation is still uh, ongoing, and we hope that uh, by the autumn, the, the contractor uh, will be uh, announced, and that will be certainly a platform with whom uh, Open Earth Monitor will have to, to work with closely. Indeed, it's uh, we are living in particular in Europe, but on the, on the global uh, side as well, in a fragmented and complete, uh, complex uh, landscape of uh, platform. We have seen the past year uh, multiplications of those uh, platforms. Uh, sometimes they just remain at the level of, uh, of the, the concept, like this case for a digital ecosystem for the environment of the UNEP. Sometimes they are uh, effectively implemented like the OpenAO platform, and I think that Patrick uh, will certainly talk about it in a, uh, later on. Uh, we are reflecting on what uh, could be the uh, future uh, GEOS uh, infrastructure, and I'm sure that uh, Yana will certainly say a, a, few, a few words uh, on that. Uh, um, reflections around the GEOS uh, concept and uh, how we see uh, the future of, uh, of GEOS. But certainly we need uh, assessment of those uh, platforms. We need to understand what are the remaining uh, gap. Um, and the recommendations of the projects are uh, expect to address yet another uh, outcomes uh, list in the, in, the, in the topic, which is not creating a new platform, of course, but converting existing environmental platforms and provide recommendations on how to do so. Uh, I invite you as well to look at some inspiring ongoing efforts for reducing these uh, fragmentations. Uh, certainly, you will have to work with uh, Destination Earth. I invite you to look at uh, the work of the advisory body that will be created to create uh, to set up a a science plan to support destination earth because uh, okay even if it's considered as an operational project under the Digi digital europe uh, program uh, launched by digiconnect we all know that uh, digital twins are still uh, um, needs uh, solid uh, science uh, evidence to be developed otherwise you just uh, pretend and you simulate things so you you don't uh, understand or for which you don't have uh, information on their limits. I invite you to look at uh, the recently adopted in February uh, of this year staff working document, which uh, is a bit the state of play of the current, um, common uh, European data space, which will be important uh, data lakes to which uh, uh, many of uh, the platforms should uh, refer to and find uh, their data. Uh, some interesting calls are as well coming from the um, Digital Europe uh, program and are uh, currently under uh, evaluation. One is about uh, the creation of a data space support center, and another one is uh, a CSA uh, on the on preparatory actions for the creation of the Green Deal data space. Look as well, of course, at the assets of our of the projects we have funded, and for example, in uh, Ishef, and I'm sure that Erwin can provide more information in the next uh, presentation. Uh, they did this uh, status at initial ass assessment where they, they basically uh, did an inventory of all the platforms and now the showcase uh, Ishef has uh, developed, uh, make use of those uh, platforms where are their limits. And this is certainly a, a good uh, analysis to start with. As I was mentioning, uh, soon you will see uh, the launch of the next generation of the DIAS with this Copernicus Space Component Data Access Service. There will be as well calls for the next generation of uh, WKO. The existing DIAS will probably, some of them at least, will uh, continue. 
a good document has been um, is the one that is uh, below and uh, drafted by your colleagues from uh, from the Joint Research Center for an emerging approach for data driven innovation in Europe. Other uh, guidance as well done by our colleagues from the Joint Research Center is on uh, enhancing access and usability to environmental observation information, which is again, and then uh, I as you have seen, I put it uh, between uh, quotes as, uh, as a quote because it comes from the from the topic uh, call, and it's uh, if it can help to identify and analyze a set of successful data ecosystem and to address recommendations in support of the evolution of contemporary spatial data infrastructure. And this report includes recommendations addressing governance, stakeholder engagement, technical issues, and economic sustainability all issues you will be faced during your uh, project. Just uh, jumping and um, to set a bit the scene, uh, because in the call topic there are references as well to, to Geo and um, Eurogeo. Uh, I will concentrate on Eurogeo because Yana will certainly tell you a bit more about uh, Geo. So what is uh, Eurogeo about? It's an initiative that was created about uh, five years uh, ago uh, at the GeoPlenary in uh, Washington, I think it was in November 2017, with the ambition to deliver an integrated European contribution to GEOS and increasing the GEOS benefits for Europe. So this initiative is a bit acting as an incubator to produce and test Earth observation derived service and applications in cooperation with Copernicus, uh, European countries and uh, organization. It aims at delivering specific Earth observation applications, benefiting from integrating global data sets made available to GEOS. It promotes scale-ups and develops Earth observation in association uh, with, with the user. So we have always put the emphasis on, on using with for users. And of course, it builds on the Copernicus and uh, Horizon 2020, uh, Horizon Europe uh, resource. So it's basically about all this, this community of practice, if you want, it's about co improving cooperation, better coordinate our activities, combine our, our expertise, combine our uh, data source uh, or our, uh, so our tools to make the, the best out of it. Uh, we are currently uh, finalizing. Five minutes, including. Yeah, yeah I'm about to. Okay. Yes, All right. yes. Uh, another two minutes. So we are just uh, completing our uh, Rogeo implementation plan that will cover the period 23-25. I will not go into all the details of, uh, of, um, of the actions we intend. Uh, I, I have just allied this um, the fourth bullet point on further the design of a European digital ecosystem that supports uh, access and interoperability of earth observation data and service for benefits uh, for, uh, for for uh, everybody that promotes the geovision in, in in Europe. And this is again something where I think that your uh, project can help us to reduce this fragmentation of uh, of a platform and see how they can better interact between each other to support, uh, to address the user requirements. Um, we have uh, Propose a few uh, change uh, in the, with respect to the, the previous three years uh, period, and uh, that includes indeed um, uh, the increase of the visibility and exploitation of uh, the European uh, open data. Um, those are other uh, proposed uh, change. I will not go into uh, many details. We mentioned and we discussed the importance of uh, unlocking access to the in situ uh, uh, data or grant data we need to uh, uh, to validate uh, our, um, our investigations. And I think that's uh, the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. We have a few minutes for questions. Um, we can put up a Slido um, word cloud in the meantime, but um, we're also happy to take questions from the audience. Um, we have lots of 
uh, viewers joining us through Teams. And so since this is a virtual talk, uh, those of you online can feel free to put a question in the chat um, or continue using Slido. Those of you present, um, if you want to raise your hand, I can pass you a mic so you can ask questions. Um, and in the meantime, we have a poll up that asks, um, oh, this is one from, uh, from John that he's asking to our partners specifically, um, how do you see complementaries and non-duplications for efforts with our sister project, EO for EU? Um, so feel free, those of you uh, who are involved in these projects, you can um, start to answer those in the word cloud, or if anyone else has a question for John, um, we can take those right now. I'm gonna also look at the chat. Uh, or if you're online and you can, you can, um, I can unmute you as well. Hmm? Oh, this, sorry. And John, I don't know if you want to just address some of these um, responses that are coming up, if you can see um, in the in the Slido. We've got lots of responses coming in. Um, yeah. Sorry. Let me see. Uh... Yes, certainly starting with the, share, the sharing of the implementation plans, but I think it can go uh, even uh, further, uh, participate in the uh, respective uh, advisory uh, boards, uh, being invited, and I think it's, it's a good that uh, the coordinator of uh, is uh, invited uh, today. Um, on the other question, uh, Great question, so we can uh, we can save time. Yeah, um, so yeah, I don't hear very well the questions. Uh, so we have one question. Oh, I just lost it. Could you scroll through? Yeah, what is the role of ground observation um, in this context, and is there any discussion and coordination with the S free landscape? So maybe you could. Tell the audience. Uh, I can start the, the one on. Or... I can start with the one on the on the, in situ. As you know, um, um, in situ data are needed that uh, are absolutely uh, essential to to validate the interpretations and the, the tools and the algorithms uh, you use to convert your uh, raw uh, earth observation data into uh, ready analysis uh, data, for example, and, or in a uh, knowledge uh, information. The issue remains the difficulty to access those uh, data. We know that with, for example, the INSPI uh, directive, Europe uh, has made a very important uh, uh, step uh, forward, but more needs to, to be done. Uh, there will be soon, uh, probably after the summer, uh, an implementation act on uh, high value uh, data sets where basically um, uh, public organization will be uh, request uh, to, for, to increase their share of, uh, of uh, geospatial data, meteorological uh, data, in a machine readable uh, format, uh, so that will uh, certainly increase the uptake and the use uh, and facilitate the access uh, to those data with um, open uh, data license. So that goes really in the direction of uh, of, um, of the guiding principle of your of your project. Thanks. I think maybe we can just answer one more quick question that's addressed to you. Um, was there one specifically for Jean in here? I thought I saw his name. Maybe on uh, the data sets owned by companies, uh, we have as well um, the, uh, some important with the European uh, strategy on data. We have important uh, new legislative uh, package on uh, the, the Data Act and the, the Data Service Act. Uh, 
which uh, encourage as well uh, private companies to to increase their share of data, for example, for uh, uh, for a pu public uh, use, uh, for example, the reinsurance uh, company have often a very much more detailed information on the on the flood, uh, the vulnerability or to flood uh, hazards, uh, uh, better data than uh, what uh, often the public uh, organization have. This is a still a very long uh, process. We all know that, of course, uh, those companies needs uh, those commercial companies need to 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 raise uh, revenue revenues of those uh, of those data they have invest uh, heavily but um, we see as well the role for example of the contributing uh, missions in uh, in copernicus uh, that are uh, sometimes operated by uh, private uh, commercial uh, companies uh, and still those data are made, uh, available to uh, to support uh, some of the key, uh, the most critical service of Copernicus, like the emergency or the security service. Okay, thank you, Jean. Unfortunately, we're out of time now. Um, so I want to uh, move on to our next speaker. But again, uh, thanks so much for your talk and please stick around. Uh, we can come back to some of those questions and share them with you afterwards. Thank you. Thanks.